Okay, I hope I'm audible to all students who are attending this lecture of financial economics. We continue with our lectures on fixed income securities. Formally, this is the first topic we do within our lectures on the unit one, which is investment theory and portfolio analysis. This is unit one for my course on financial economics, investment theory and portfolio analysis. And within unit one, this is the first topic we do, which is fixed income security. Okay, formally, this is chapter three of the book Investment Science by David G. Lundberger. Now, all students can recall that in the previous lecture, we were looking at some important terminologies involved in investment science. Okay. We were looking at uh, all these terminologies, what is meant by a security, what is meant by fixed income securities, what are the kinds of savings deposits we have, what is the money market, what are the instruments we have in the money market. So we had done commercial paper, bankers, acceptance. We had also talked about euro-dollar deposits. And then we had also done a brief discussion of the government securities in the U.S. We had talked about U.S. Treasury bills, the characteristics of U.S. Treasury notes, U.S. Treasury bonds, and U.S. Treasury strips. In just the previous lecture only, we had talked about other bonds. This is something which we had done in the immediate last lecture room. In just the immediate previous lecture, we had talked about other bonds where we had done a discussion of municipal bonds. And we had also talked about corporate bonds in the previous lecture. We had also done some of the characteristics of bonds like the callable properties, thinking funds, Debt subordinations, all this was covered in the previous lecture. And in the previous lecture, we had also talked about mortgages. Okay, now what are we doing in today's lecture? It's a very interesting topic called annuities. So today's lecture of financial economics starts with the concept of annuities. Okay, so now let's understand what is meant by an annuity. Okay, so an annuity is a contract that pays the holder money periodically according to a predetermined schedule or formula over a period of time. Okay, so annuity is going to generate, I can say, fixed payments of a predetermined amount. So everything is predetermined. How much will be paid to the annuity holder? In how much time will the annuity holder get money? Everything the annuity holder knows uh, predetermined. That means the annuity holder has clear cut idea about when he or she will be receiving these payments and of how much amounts. And these are all periodical. So after every fixed period of time, the annuity holder is going to receive a fixed sum of money. Example, you all of us know pension benefits. Okay. When people retire from jobs, especially the government jobs or bureaucrat jobs, they get pensions. Okay. These are like annuities only because it's a fixed sum of money paid periodically. Sometimes annuities are structured to provide a fixed payment every year for as long as the annuitant is alive. Remember, annuitant is the person who is enjoying the annuity payments. In which case, the price of the annuity is based on the age of the annuitant, when the annuity is purchased, and on the number of years until the payments are initiated. Okay, so there are several annuities where the amount, the fixed amount to be paid every year depends upon the age of the annuitant. And it also depends upon the number of years until the payments are initiated. You also calculate the number of years the annuitant is expected to live on an average. So 
So I hope all students have understood the definition of annuities. If I quickly revise, point number one, annuity is a contract which is going to pay money periodically. Point number two, it is predetermined. That means the schedule of payments, when the payment will be made and how much payment will be made is all predetermined. Example of annuity, pension benefits. Okay. And point number four, some of the annuities are structured to provide fixed payments for as long as the annuitant is alive. The price of the annuity depends on the age of the annuitant. And it also depends upon the expected number of years until the annuitant is expected to live. Or I can say the number of years until the payments are initiated. Okay. A note for all of us to understand, annuities are not really securities since they are not traded. Remember, when we talk about securities, they are traded in the market. There is a market for securities. There is no market we have for annuities. Annuities are considered to be, on the other hand, investment opportunities that are available at standardized rates. So, people invest in annuities which guarantee you fixed returns periodically. So, annuity is not a security which is traded in the market. On the other hand, it's an investment opportunity. Okay. So, hoping students have understood this. What are perpetual annuities? A perpetual annuity, a perpetual annuity is also called a perpetuity. It is going to pay a fixed sum of money periodically forever. So perpetual annuities do not have a defined maturity date. They are going to pay you a fixed sum of money as time tends to infinity. So I can say forever means as time tends to infinity. That is why it's called a perpetuity. It's never ending. So perpetual annuities are never ending. They are going to pay a fixed sum of money forever. Okay. Now let's calculate. Let's now have some math uh, in the financial economics course. And let's now start with deriving the present value of a perpetual annuity. So let me come to the whiteboard. Let me use the whiteboard for this. And... Coming to the whiteboard, just writing the main topic for completeness. This is fixed income securities. Okay, and the reference is chapter three of David. G. Lundberger. Investment Science by David G. Lundberger. In this lecture, we are taking up the concept of annuity for discussion. Okay, so now let's look at how to derive the present value of a perpetual annuity. So just, I'm just writing, just for the sake of completeness, I'm writing the definition. Annuities are contracts that pay the holder money periodically, that pay the holder money periodically according to A predetermined schedule or formula. I am just writing it just for completeness as a summary of what we have done till now. Over a period of time. Okay. So when we talk about annuities, these are contracts which are going to pay the annuity holder. The holder is also called the annuitant. The holder is called the annuitant. Okay. Money is going to be paid periodically. Uh, 
according to a predetermined schedule or formula over a given period of time. Okay, example pension benefit. Moving forward, we have talked about perpetual annuities. We have talked about perpetual annuities. What are perpetual annuities? Are those annuities that pay a fixed sum that pay a fixed sum periodically forever. They pay a fixed sum periodically forever. Okay, and now we can derive the present value of a perpetual annuity. So, erasing this whole part, Let's now derive the present value of a perpetual annuity. So, present value of a perpetual annuity. Okay, so let's first of all talk about, so suppose I say, suppose an amount A, suppose an amount A is paid at the end of each period. Suppose an amount A is paid at the end of each period starting at starting at the end of the first period starting at the end of the first period and suppose suppose the per period interest Suppose the per period interest is R. Okay, so there's an amount A and this amount is paid at the end of each period and we start with the end of the first period. So at the end of the first period, you will receive the amount A. Then at the end of the second period, you will receive the amount A and so on. So guys, uh, after the end of every period, you receive an amount A starting from the end of the first period. Then what is the present value? We have done the concept of present value in our mathematical economics course as well, mathematical methods for economics course. We have done the concept of present value in our microeconomics course as well, in our macroeconomics course as well, in our lectures on consumption theory. Okay, so this is not a new concept now in financial economics course. Okay, so when we talk about the present value, the first amount of A I will be receiving will be at the end of the first period. For simplicity to make it more easy, think of period as a year. Otherwise, when we talk about uh, financial economics course, period does not necessarily mean year. A period is a set of defined days. Okay, so let but to make it simple, if we talk about it as an year, so after one year, my my amount is A, but what is its present value today? A upon 1 plus R. After two periods, again, I will receive the amount A, its present value today is A upon 1 plus R square. After three periods, or I can say three years, again, I will receive the amount A, its present value today is A upon 1 plus R cube. And since it's perpetual, it's never ending, so I can keep on going. So you can clearly see that you are receiving a fixed amount A. That means every year the amount is not changing. 
it's the same fixed amount A you are receiving at the end of every period. So I can say this, this is the present value of A at received at the end of period one. Present value of A is received at the end of period one. This is the present value of A received at the end of period two. This is the present value of A, present value of the amount A received at the end of period three. Okay, and so on. Okay, so how can I write it? I can write it like this. So I can say that if I, let me erase the initial part. We all know what we are doing now. Raising the initial part, I can write it as P is equal to, I can sum it up, summation, as K goes on from one to infinity. Why am I taking infinity? Because it's perpetual, it's never ending. Summation as k goes on from 1 to infinity, a upon 1 plus r to the power k. And guys, you can see that this is a geometric series. So this is an infinite geometric series. This is an infinite geometric series. Okay, and all of us know, guys, what is the sum of infinite geometric series? Uh, I can say that sum of infinite geometric series, which is a plus a r plus a r square plus a r q plus dot dot dot. What is the sum of this? A upon 1 minus. We all know this from the mathematical methods for economics course. We have done the concept of geometric series in our mathematical methods for economics part 1 course. The sum of infinite geometric series is A upon 1 minus R. Now, if you look at this whole expression for present value, what is your first term? So what is A? So I can write where A is the first term. Where A is the first term of the geometric series. And R is the common ratio. A denotes the first term and R is your common ratio. So if you look at the formula now, look at the formula for P. This is my A and my common ratio. How do we find the common ratio for a geometric series? Divide the two terms. So I, if I divide this by this, my common ratio is nothing but 1 plus R. So I can say that therefore, for this particular formula, if I raise the initial part, I can write that therefore my P is equal to A, which is my first term, upon 1 minus my common ratio is 1 upon 1 plus. My A is nothing but A upon 1 plus R upon 1 minus my common ratio is 1 upon 1 plus R. How did we get the common ratio? This term divided by this term gives me the common ratio. So if I solve this up further, what do I get? I can take LCM in the denominator. Things get cancelled out. 
I get A upon R. So what can I say? The So if I write it now, I can write it. Erasing this particular part. I can write that <clears throat> thus the present value, the present value P of a perpetual annuity, present value P of a perpetual annuity that pays an amount A that pays an amount A every period beginning one period from the present. Or I can say beginning at the end of the first period. That means, guys, you start receiving the annuity amount at the end of the first period. Is given by A by R. So this is the present value of a perpetual annuity, which is going to pay you a fixed annuity amount A at the end of the first period and R denotes the rate of interest between the two periods. Okay. So I hope all students have understood this. We can also do a numerical. So let's do a numerical. So if I uh, write a numerical, practice numerical. Let's look at a practice numerical. So find... Find the present value. Find the present value of a perpetual annuity. Find the present value of a perpetual annuity of $1,000 when the interest rate is 10%. when the interest rate is 10%. Okay, so we need to find out what's the present value of this perpetual annuity of $1,000. Okay, that means perpetual annuity of $1,000 means you are going to get $1,000 every period starting from the end of the first period. When I say the perpetual annuity of $1,000, it means what? It means starting from the end of the first period, every period you are receiving $1,000. Okay, so my A is equal to $1,000. That's my annuity amount. That is my annuity amount. Okay, and my rate of interest is 10%, which I can say as 0 0.1. 0 0.1. So if I directly use the formula, we need to calculate the present value, which is P. So therefore, directly using the formula, my P is what? It's a perpetual energy, so it's A by R. It's a perpetual energy, so my P is equal to A by R. A is how much? 1000. R is how much? 0.1. 1000 divided by 0.1 is how much? So my P is equal to 10,000. This is the present value, or I can say, the price which you are willing to pay for the annuity. It's like saying that you are willing to pay $10,000 today to enjoy $1,000 every year starting from the end of the first year forever at the interest rate of 10%. This is the present value of your perpetual annuity. So, you are willing to pay, or I can say you will pay $10,000. It's like saying, this is how we interpret the present value. 
the price you are willing to pay to enjoy a payment of $1,000 forever, starting from the end of the first year with the rate of interest of 10% is nothing but $10,000. This is your answer for this question. Or I can see the present value. Okay, so I hope all students have understood this. Guys, this is where I intend to stop in this particular lecture. The objective was to take up the basic concept of annuities, discuss perpetual annuities and the derivation of present value of a perpetual annuity. All this we have covered on the whiteboard. So students can also refer to my PDF lecture note for the derivation part, although we have covered it in depth on the whiteboard. Now, what are we doing in the next lecture? In, we have done this numerical also on the whiteboard. Again, we have covered this numerical on the whiteboard. Now, in the next lecture, we are going to look at present value of a finite lifestyle. We were looking at perpetual annuities in this lecture, which were paying us a fixed sum of annuity payments forever. Now, let's be more realistic. In the next lecture, we'll talk about how to calculate the present value of a finite live stream. That means uh, you, you will now be receiving the payments only for a finite lifetime, not perpetual. So we are going to talk about this in the next lecture. So I hope all students have enjoyed this lecture. Any doubt, you can unmute your mic and ask or call up or mail me your doubts at Divine School of Economics at the rate gmail.com. This is where I stop in this lecture.